This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. It's nice to finally see somebody in studio. Yes. Brian, Brian McMahon is a feature film colorist at Modern Video Film who's collaborated with talented cinematographers such as Emmanuel Uzbeki and director Terrence Mellick. He works on productions such as Night of Cups and Tree of Life. We talk with him tonight about his amazing work, color grading Night of Cups. Hello, Brian. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. Brian, what first got you interested in the process of light and color? Uh, boy, uh, I started doing color when, it, when really uh, digital color first started off. No one really knew where it was going at the time. Uh, and I learned, uh, I did a little bit of film timing. Uh, to learn from those guys who are the masters. Now, what's film timing mean? Uh, film timing is the old uh, timing for film, no digital. It, you're on a Hazeltine or I don't know what it's called now. Uh, you're using lights, uh, red, green, blue, or yellow, magenta, cyan, depending on where you are. Uh, and it's manual light uh, timing of film. So you would shine a faint red light through a film to give it more of a red color. You would look at look at uh, uh, like a monitor, but at, you were you were changing the red, green, blue. You had from zero to fifty of lights. If you want to brighten everything, you just turn them all up or down, depending on what element you're you're on. Um, and the whole image would either get lighter, darker. Uh, if you wanted to warm something up, you you would add red, and and it just it, it's an overall color. It Nothing sounds, like digital. It sounds like it's uh, you get it right or you screw it up. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you can't change your mind. You're, you're a little gotta... limited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no wonder these guys are the masters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what did you do with Knight of Cups? Um, it started, uh, I got involved in the very beginning. Um, Terry and Chivo asked me to do the dailies uh, because th they shot it, uh, it was in edit for about a year. And uh, Terry gets, is, he, he's going to get used to the look of the dailies. So we wanted to make sure that everything, all the dailies were done right, that the look is what was intended. So uh, when we did the final color, it, it was what everybody was used to. You were color grading on set? Before? No, uh, they were shooting uh, local. I would do it every morning, kind of like the old traditional dailies. But you were color grading before they would review the dailies? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure to get it right, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, Chivo and I talked uh, almost every day, and uh, I would send him stills. Uh, we were doing, the movie was shot with various formats, so uh, we would, I would send him off stills every day of what we were doing, and he would call me if he had any, any changes, and we'd take it from there. Were there big changes between day to day, or was it pretty much just matching day to day from what you did like last Tuesday, and it was going to be the same as Thursday? It's it's uh, the film is not necessarily like a traditional film where you have a whole scene in one area and then you move to another area. It bounces around a lot. So, um, you know, if there was something specific they were looking for, then I'd talk. We would talk ahead of time, um, but. Terry Terry uh, goes for what he calls a no look look, so it, he's not he's not trying to make it very warm, or very colorful, very dark, very moody. It's pretty much like looking out a window. So in that respect, it wasn't that difficult to, for dailies at least, to just do a normal pass on it. And yeah, well, he, he shot in, what, 35, and he shot in 65, and he shot in different formats throughout the the whole shooting of the movie, right? Yeah, every day I would have uh, uh, not a lot of 65, but every day we would have 35 millimeter uh, Airy and GoPro. GoPro? Uh, GoPro, uh, <laughs> a little bit of black magic here and there, um, pretty much whatever they could throw at it. How hard was it to work with all those different formats? Because they all start from a different place. They do. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't bad. It, it, once you get the, uh, an established a look for it, I mean, the GoPro is a little bit limited as far as what I can do. Um, but uh, it all, it all, it's amazing how well it cut together. Every day I would sit and watch a 15-foot a, uh, screen 
and I'd, I'd do the 35 millimeter, and then I'd do the Airy, and then I'd do the GoPro, and it all kind of flowed together pretty well. Why, why so many different formats? Different look. Just the, one of those different looks. A different look, okay. but you want it to all look the same. How do you reconcile those two sentences? Um, well, it's it. the GoPro, obviously, with the lens difference, uh, it has a different look. They can, they can throw it around, um, do things that they can't do with, with everything else. The Airy has, is a beautiful low-light uh, camera, uh, but nothing can catch the bright, the highlights like film. So I, I'm, I'm finding this interesting because he used a Airy digital camera. Is that what you're saying, the mm -hmm. Alexa? And, and I always thought Terrence Malick was a bit of a film snob like uh, Quentin Tarantino and, and a few others just wouldn't shoot digital. This is... Um, but he obviously wanted that look. Yeah, yeah. If um, there is such a thing, because I can't tell the difference. Maybe you can, but I, you know that Alexa and the Red, they're very cinematic looking cameras. They're great cameras. Yeah. Um, they are. We have a live chat going, and Sore Feet's asking, is there a certain film type or certain camera format that you really like to work with? Uh, well, I love film. Um, 65 is great, but you don't <laughs> see it very often. Uh, yeah, you're like one of the last people actually to be able to work on that. That's really cool. It's, it's nobody's amazing. using it. Yeah. And Christopher Nolan, maybe, and a couple other people. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, I, li I like the Airy. I, I just like the look of the Airy. Um, but like I said, it, you just can't get the highlights like you can in film. Now, when you're shooting with the area, are you shooting a raw format or are you shooting one of the baked in formats? And if so, is there a special trick to working with raw? Um, no, not, there's no, no special trick necessarily. We, um, on this picture we did all raw. So we took the raw airy. Uh, we, I used an airy LUT. Um, just a standard airy LUT. Sometimes I go without a LUT. It depends on the scene. Um, it, it, it all, uh, it's pretty standard, really. But um, I like to work with the raw um, as much as I can. Because? Uh, if I need any handles of exposure or anything like that, I can get to them. I'm not limited by somebody's idea of what I should be looking at, which is what happens with LUTs. Yeah. Um, so a lot of colors say that. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, it's you know, especially if you were messing with them in the early days, um, they were most LUTs were film based in the early days. So they were, you know, I'd, I'd get a LUT and it would force me into a film kind of a area. The heel and the. It's just not. It, it's somebody else's idea of how things should look, and it's it's a great tool, but. Um, I find myself more and more uh, not using them at all. Well, seeing as your job is to create the look, you'd want to be as unrestrained as possible. Exactly. Sorefeet is also asking how you're coping with the end of film. Um, <laughs> you don't. You, know, you don't sound like you care. <laughs> uh, well, I, you, you sound know, like a digital guy. I I, I love film. Look, film's going to be around uh, as far as I mean. We're still doing a lot of the older movies. We're doing restorations on them. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, Can't like those though. Ah, oh, boy, they're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the black and whites are just stunning. Oh, we just yeah. did Thin Red Line, and it's just gorgeous. But but um. I really like the area. You, you just remastered Thin Red Line? It's not that old of a movie. Uh, like... <laughs> yeah. You just did a 4K DCP. It's oh, really? Beautiful. Wow. Mm. Um, but uh, the, the area is great with low lights and things like that. It's a great camera, but it doesn't quite have the range of film. Yeah, I'm telling you, only you guys and cinematographers can see that. I just can't. You know. <laughs> I love going to the movies now and when you can go to a movie two weeks after it's opened and there ain't a hair or a split or any of that stuff. It's just a yeah. nice, clean, crisp image. And I love it. So uh, I don't miss film at all. I, I miss film as a pickup. Uh, not as a, as a recording medium. Uh, as a capture. Um, I don't miss, personally, I don't miss film prints that much. Yeah, true, true. Tell us about what Night of Cups is about, and what. how did you achieve a no-look look? look? Yeah, words, tell us what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> tell us what that movie's about, will you? <laughs> just, uh, just a summary for people that may not have yet seen it. Uh, it's it's a guy who's kind of looking, uh, he's, he's 
wandering through life much like we do when we walk outside and we're just thinking to ourselves. Um, it it uh, the no look look is um, it, it like I said it's it's like looking out a window. It's like looking at each other. You know, it's not a specific. Don't make it dark. Don't make it, make it light. Don't go colorful. Not colorful. Just natural, as natural as we can make it. Uh, which is actually a lot harder to do than giving something a look. Why is that? Because when you give something a look, let's say we're going to make this very this area very warm and desaturated. We give it that look, and it's kind of easy. Everything is kind of warm and desaturated. You you have a little bit of a crutch almost. Uh, to give something a no-look look on a continuous basis when you're bouncing from different areas, it's tough. You know, when you go see a Terrence Malick movie, it's it's you never kind of sit there and go, that's really a no-look look. It's there's, there's always a look to a Terrence Malick movie. It, it, it has something to do with where they're placing the camera and where yeah. the angles is and everything else. But he's definitely got a style. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have, you know, Chivo shooting it. I mean, it's... yeah. It's beautiful stuff. Thomas also in our live chats asking, when you say Aerie, you mean the Aerie Alexa? The Alexa, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. he wanted to be sure and he was confused. Yeah. With the um, with the, the creation of the final look, uh, first, what software were you using to create the look for dailies? And how did you prevent that from baking into the clips so you could go back to the raw and update it later? In the uh, dailies process, we were scanning film at 2K. Uh, we were on a color front. Uh, we were scanning the film at 2K, and you know, obviously the area was what it was. Um, but nothing, none of that was used when we did the final. We scanned all the film at 4K. Did it all we, get scanned at the same time, or did you only scan the stuff you were going to use? Just the stuff we were going to use. It, there's a lot of film. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we had. We, it was, a, I think, about a 45, 48 day shoot. And we were doing about three to five hours of material a day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a, a lot film. of stuff. No, well, that's everything. That's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's everything, yeah. okay. With the, with the color grade at the end, what software? Uh, the Resolve, the, the uh, Black Magic Resolve. Is that, your, is that your baby? Is that your favorite? Or have you worked on any of the others? Oh, yeah. Any other big guys? Yeah. The really $100,000, $200,000 Pablos or whatever they call <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've been, I, I've, I've probably been on at least a dozen platforms over the years. Um, it, it's really, uh, I, I do like, you know, I'm an old DaVinci, when it was DaVinci, just, a, I'm an old DaVinci user. Uh, I got, I, I ran a different system for a while. I ran a base light for a while. It's what you're used to. They're all good. They all have their, their good points. Uh, I like the Resolve. Do you like what Resolve is doing now, putting into like a full-fledged editing system within the, within the program? It does it, that, it, that doesn't get in your way, I'm assuming. Um, it, it's, no, I don't do a lot of conforming myself. Um, you know, I, a lot of the guys do that ahead of time. Uh, I am working in clip mode, so I do need to be aware of what's going on that way. Um, but... Uh, the editing I, 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 is not something I get into that much. Um, you talked about doing dailies at 2K and mm -hmm. the final color grade at 4K. Does resolution make a difference in your color grade? Um, no, not not in my color grade. But uh, remember, like especially with film, we scanned everything at 2K. Well, now this is a year or two later. Now we're scanning everything at 4K. They don't match. Uh, I have to go by memory or what I, you know, how I, how we did it the first time. Why wouldn't they match? Um, it's just, it, it does, it's not something that it does, it just doesn't, in a perfect world, yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, that solves that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other question that we've got from Sorefeet, he said there was a, a lot of wide angles shot in Knight of Cups. Do wide angles make any difference to you? Does the angle of the shot make a difference when you're coloring? Not really, no. Um, no, the, the uh, I mean, obviously there's differences in the cameras, but um, the angle or the subject, no. It's, it's, um, it's all pretty much the same kind of thing. What makes a what what makes a great colorist? I mean, what makes uh, what 
makes you um, able to work with Terrence Malick and not get fired? <laughs> Uh, well, Terry's a really easy guy. <laughs> okay. He's he's really easy going guy. No, but you obviously are good at what you do. What uh, what what makes a good colorist? Uh, communication, I think, more than anything. I mean, you have to know what you're doing, but it's but how it's do be more I... about learn? As, the, I I know the tool, but so, it's a, I was looking for those those things that we can't see. Yeah, it's it's pretty much how do I see what you have in your mind. Okay. What colors well, in your mind? <laughs> how do you see what he has well, in his well, mind? Well, I mean, I, if you explain a scene to me, how do I? I have to pretty much feel what you're thinking. Feel, get get an idea of what you want to see. Uh, that's probably the trickiest part. Of it. So, how do you want the director to talk to you? Is he describing it in terms of food, or in terms of emotions, or colors, or oh, what? Oh boy, I've heard everything. <laughs> I know, but what what do you like? What what? seems to communicate with you, because no director is going to be able to talk color the way you're going to want to think color. Um, you know, uh, it's pretty easy to get the point across usually, uh, you know. Um, uh, the hardest ones are when people don't know. They just go, it doesn't look right, I don't know why. Fix oh, it. Oh, that's helpful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I've heard that a lot over the years, but but usually so it's, directors talk to actors. I don't know. Just do it better. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> do it different. Yeah, um, do it different. It's a communication. It's uh, you know more communication than anything else. Um, just talking about it. Starting how soon? How much time do you want to think about a color grade? Um, well, on a on 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 this picture, we talked a little bit about it in, in the beginning, and then we just started in um, so it was the process I've had, I've, of doing. I'm lucky I've been able to work with these guys on, on a few pictures so, so a lot of times and I'm sure this has happened in your career you you work with these guys and uh, they tell you what they want and then they go off and do another job and uh, they don't come back for whenever and, and it's it's in, you're left to your own devices and yeah. hope to God it works and because uh, they're just not there all the time that's that's what's that's a lot of it yeah that's a lot of it <laughs> <laughs> What to, what to you is the most fun as you're as you're grading a picture? Because the opposite side, what's the most difficult? What's the most fun? Um, when I have the director or the DP in the room, uh, I I can nail it. I, you know, if I've got them there, sometimes when they're not around, I don't have any input. I'm guessing. Uh, it's easier on a digital capture to do that. Um, it points you in the right direction, but on film scans, it's a little more difficult. And what's the most difficult? Just when they're not there? Is there a particular part of the job that's trickier than others? Um, no, it, it comes down to um, just, com once again, communication. There's some people know how to <clears throat> communicate. They don't have to tell me exactly. I mean, I can. I've heard. I've worked with two directors that are brothers. Um, they both use. They both on on two different pictures, and they both use salmon. They said it needs more salmon. But they both have a different idea of what salmon is. <laughs> so, figuring out, getting you know, a, a feel for what they're going after. Um, but some people just don't know how to communicate. They just don't know what it is that they're looking for. Quickly, what's your favorite reference monitor? Uh, Dolby. Oh, oh, that new one? That oh. Well, the Pulsar is great. Ah. But uh, <laughs> that's uh, big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I just did some work on it. It's it's amazing. But for people who want to take a look at the kind of work that you and your company is doing, where can it go on the web? Uh, that's a good question. I How don't really know. MVF.com. MVF.com, yeah. A great answer. <laughs> yes. It stands for Modern Video Film MVF.com and Brian McMahon is a colorist and not a webmaster for Modern Video Film. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Take care.